Here's one person's experience being autistic. Hello, my name is Jennifer Woodruff Tate. I am 52 years old. I was diagnosed officially with ASD level one, which is known as high functioning autism. I've been for autism with low support needs um, when I was 49, but I probably self diagnosed myself 20 years before that. But when I was in my 20s, I read a book about what was then referred to as Asperger's disease, and I brought it to my mother, who I now believe was probably a level two a medium support need uh, autistic. And she said, Oh, you can't be autistic. You can't have Asperger's because I experience all these same things and I'm not autistic. Well, I, I believe now that she was, but you know, this sort of sat in the back of my head for a while. And then when I was in my late forties, my older child went through the process of diagnosis and we were having a meeting uh, where the psychologist was asking questions about my child. And I thought, gosh, I can answer all these questions myself. So I asked the child psychologist who was diagnosing uh, my older child to recommend somebody who would do an adult diagnosis. Um, it was actually pretty easy for me uh, to get a diagnosis, but I've found that it's been harder for other people um, later. This was early during the pandemic. We did it over Zoom. Of course, I didn't have a very long wait list. I think in just the last few years, there's really been an explosion in diagnoses, uh, people trying to access diagnoses. And so the same person now has like a five-year wait list. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the hardest parts for people uh, <clears throat> who want to be officially diagnosed is uh, finding someone and getting on a waiting list for someone who would diagnose adult autistics. Uh, there aren't that many people uh, still that will do that. Um, once I talked to the psychologist, the actual process was not that difficult. She had me fill out several assessments. We had two interviews where she talked through various things. And then we had a third meeting. Um, I mean, I think when we had the meetings, the first two, she was working through assessments on her end, answering questions. And then the third uh, meeting, she presented to me what she had written up. And she said, you know, sort of, is this, does this accurately represent our discussions? Do you, do you want to make sure I understood what was going on? Um, and we also talked a little bit about putting specific things into uh, what she was writing about accommodations that I might want to ask for, particularly accommodations in medical settings. Um, so she wrote those down as suggestions. So for instance, to go to my doctor for certain certain things that I find difficult in a medical setting. Uh, so, um, so what characteristics of mine that uh, people notice? Well, I stare at the ceiling a lot, I'm doing it right now. Um, I, over the years, uh, I've become um, a pretty good masker uh, in terms of masking, autistic masking, which is a whole other subject. So I think I have a lot of, um, a lot of characteristics of being autistic that people just don't notice. Um, um, people know that I have a PhD and I read a lot of books. So I think oh, Jennifer just weird because she's you know an intellectual. Uh, that's true, but um, but it's also true that I, I people sometimes notice that I have special interests uh, that I get really invested in things. But I think that a lot of times uh, people don't really notice um, notice uh, unless I tell them. Because I, I, I masked very heavily. So I was in my late forties and got diagnosed. Um, and so a lot of times in public, I'm thinking, um, like even right now, sitting in my office, I'm thinking about the temperature, how my clothes feel, the way my voice is coming out of my mouth, by making eye contact, the words I'm using, and the sensory input from the setting room is utterly overwhelming at every moment. A lot of people aren't aren't aware that that's going on unless I tell them. People are like, wait, aren't you just listening to what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, there's a TV on in the corner, and they say, yeah, just block it out. And you know, I. I can't do that. Um, I think a lot of people's concept of autism is still Rain Man. Um, and they don't think that autism, autistic people are women. Um, and there's still actually not a lot of research on what autism looks like in women. Um, and then people say, you know, you hold down a job, you have degrees, you're married, you have children. Autistic people can't do those things. I, it can be challenging to do those things, but, you know, I am autistic and I do those things. Um, so... A lot of times people don't think I'm autistic because I'm working really, really hard for them not to think that. Um, I've gotten much better after getting my initial diagnosis as just saying, look, I'm autistic and that means I need these accommodations and I'm going to be this way as we relate to each other. One of the strengths, I think, of my autism, uh, maybe the best way to put it, is pattern recognition. Uh, autistic people in general are really good at pattern recognition. And so I walk into a situation and I get vibes from the situation because I'm subconsciously recognizing patterns. And I'll be like, yeah, you." You just you shouldn't trust this person, and then other people say oh, that person's perfectly fine, and then later if they find out oh, we shouldn't have trusted that person, uh, so I pick up um, on that sort of thing a lot in a situation, and almost sort of 
prophetically. Uh, my mother used to do this. She knew when people were going to write her back, back when we all wrote letters and sent them in the mail. Uh, she'd say, oh, I, I'm going to get a letter from so-and-so today or tomorrow. Uh, and then she would. And at the time, but she was doing magic. Uh, but it, I think it was pattern recognition in terms of she was subconsciously recognizing about, about how often that person would write to her. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest strengths. Um, also, I think um, perseverance. Um, with an autistic person, a lot of times, if there's something you want to do, especially something you have a special interest in, you'll hang on for dear life. Um, and in my case, one of my special interests was getting a PhD and doctoral programs are really hard. So uh, the autism sort of gave me the strength to persevere that. Um, ch challenges, some of the challenges to having autism for me are that the world is not built for people with sensory sensitivity. And so, for example, every time I go to a doctor's office, it was my doctor's, there's a there's a TV in the corner uh, because I guess neurotypical people are bored, want to watch something and we're waiting for the doctor. And I find this utterly terrible, especially if it's tuned to soap operas. Uh, the best case scenario is it's tuned to that health channel where there's somebody on there talking about how to get your blood pressure checked. Uh, but a lot of times it's doing this soaps or, you know, a, some kind of, you know, once I, once I took my kids to the doctor and it was doing some kind of, you know, supernatural show. Um, and I've got this sort of no, no control over the way that that uh, batters in on my senses and on my emotions. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I'm like, I'm just at the allergist. I didn't uh, sign up to have nightmares uh, because you're showing supernatural. So uh, one of the most uh, challenging things to be autist to being autistic at my age is the constant amount of energy <clears throat> that I spend on sensory things that may or may not even be noticed by other people, but that are assaulting me in every situation. Um, faith. Um, so my faith, my faith has been, uh, sustaining, but also uh, something that has been some issues around because um, I grew up in a tradition where it was expected that you would have a, very, a really emotional approach to faith, uh, and um, and I didn't, and so um, I I constantly felt like that was something wrong with my spiritual growth, um, and now I understand that I just I'm I'm autistic. I don't, I'm not going to have the expected emotions at the expected times. If I have emotions, I'm not going to be able to label them. I'm not going to be able to know exactly what they are. I'm not going to respond to things in the way uh, that was expected to respond to. And that doesn't mean that I don't believe in the creeds and that I don't believe in the scriptures and that I don't believe that, you know, <clears throat> that Jesus is real and that I can have a relationship with him. Uh, it just means that I, that I don't really have that relationship emotionally. And, but one of the things that has been more sustaining is as I discovered more liturgical uh, aspects of faith. Um, a lot of autistic people who are religious love liturgical traditions because the same thing happens every week. Um, and so it's, you know, it's very predictable. I go, I'm Episcopalian. I know that there will be the Book of Common Prayer, that we will say these prayers, that I will hear three scriptures, readings in a psalm, you know, that there will be communion. We do communion in a very predefined way. So um, so discovering uh, the fact that that there was a tradition out there that would, you know, sort of allow me to come into it with my Christian beliefs, but not expect me to have certain emotions as long as I followed the procedures, um, you know, that gets a lot of times people like, oh, you know, no, 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 you know, that that's not real faith. Well, for an autistic person, I think that that, that kind of faith is a godsend, the kind of faith that says, you know what, you, you're you not saved through following the procedures, you're saved by Jesus, but you can experience faith through following predefined procedures, and that is okay, and people will not, you know, get upset at you for it, or say that you aren't really a Christian because you're not having the right kind of emotions. So my, so my relationship to faith as an autistic person is, is complicated in all those ways. I'm William O'Flaherty. Thanks for visiting my channel. Please consider liking and or sharing this video. Also, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and watch other videos.